Ferrovial started some 60 years ago as a Spanish construction company. Today, it's a multinational conglomerate with several business lines. It services the London Underground, for example, and it built the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, Spain, all in the name of building intelligent infrastructures. Joining us now is the man in charge of information and innovation at Ferrovial, Federico Flores. Welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. Nice to be here. Ferrovial's chairman, Rafael Del Pino, said Ferrovial is firmly committed to innovation as a crucial element for driving and leading the transformation of infrastructure in the 21st century. What did he mean by that? Well, it means that innovation is very important for our company and for the business where we are making business. We are in the infrastructure business. The, the margins there are quite low. So we need uh, very talented people and very innovative ideas to differentiate from other competitors. And that is the meaning of innovation for us, to make more business and different business of uh, the competitors are doing. And can you give me an example? I mean, we talk about smart buildings or highways in Texas or trash collection in Barcelona. I mean, this is a very varied business. Uh, well, yes, we have uh, four lines of business. We have highways, uh, construction, services, and, and airports. And we have many innovation projects in, in all of them. For instance, we have in the services business, we have projects related with the energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. So we have a uh, software specialized to uh, manage the, all the power of uh, not only electricity, but any kind of energy in a facility in order not to waste money and energy. And in highways, we have uh, very complex uh, systems for uh, recognizing the, the tracks and the cars that are using our highways, uh, even, even without uh, reading the, the mat, because we can recognize the, the car itself. Ferrovial has uh, something like 70,000 employees in 40 countries. Um, how does IT and, and innovation uh, help to manage all of this? I mean, just the sheer people management must be a, an innovative challenge. Well, yes, we are, we are a global company and we have to, to, to try to manage IT uh, in a global base. In that sense, we, we have all the infrastructure of IT, plus the communication, externalize and, uh, and unify for the whole group. And uh, also we have developed uh, vertical solutions of IT according to the business lines. So. I mean, how are you finding skilled workers for IT these days? Anyway, um, it's difficult to find uh, talent in IT because there is not enough talent in Europe. And what we are doing is that we try to retain the best people with uh, talent uh, management initiatives uh, in order for the key employees um, to, to be successful in, for them in, in, in giving the opportunity to, to work in a good company and, 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 of course, trying to avoid that they can leave the company if they are the key employees. So we spend a lot of money in training, in business, in development of their skills. Um, we use social networking for exchanging information and knowledge uh, around all the employees. And, and that kind of things, I think, they are very motivated for the, for the employees. And this is the way we try to retain the best and the best people. So how do you decide what to outsource and where do you go for talent if you can't find it in Europe? The outsource, we decided to outsource uh, several business processes because they were not a core uh, business for Ferrovial. This is the first reason. The second one was that uh, we wanted uh, to be very flexible because we are, we are a company that grows um, dramatically and, and also we sell companies. So we have to be very flexible. And, uh, and, and we weren't. I mean, if you have your own infrastructure, your own application, it's difficult to change in a changing environment. So with an outsourcing, uh, you can be very flexible. You can change the conditions of the hardware, software very easily. It's a question of uh, service and paying for that. And that was the reason that because we started the sourcing. Of course, we were looking also for, for savings, but the main reason was the flexible environment for Ferrovial. I'm curious too, you talked about the need to be flexible and adapt to the, the 
changing society. Certainly a couple like in 2008, everybody was adapting like crazy. And if you're in construction, that was probably the hardest hit. So I can imagine that there was a lot that went on uh, at Ferrovial then. So where do you see most profitability? Now that you're over that horrible 2008, 2009 <laughs> period, um, where do you see opportunities for growth, profitability? We are doing, uh, we are making a good business. I mean, we, mm. our figures are, are quite good, uh, according with the business we have. I mean, not very high margins, but uh, we are very in a very good position in the market, uh, and we are leaders in several issues. Okay, our, our investment in infrastructure is, is quite good, is quite high. It's around 60, 60 billion dollars in infrastructure. So we have invested a lot of money. And uh, what we foresee is that there are other markets, other countries, where we can also make business. Is there, can you name any of them? I know you do a lot of business in, in Poland and certainly in Eastern Europe where infrastructure maintenance was not going very well for about 50 years. There must be a lot more business there. Well, we are making also a very good business and very growing in the States, mm -hmm. uh, mainly in, in the south part of the States. But we are also looking for business in other countries like uh, Colombia, Chile, or even Australia. We are looking at this uh, continent with uh, many opportunities for the future. Now, you yourself um, have been an IT person for more than two decades. Mm -hmm. You've worked at Alcatel, Telefonica, the Bank of Spain. You were e European CIO of the year in 2011. How has the role of CIA, CIO changed since you've been in this business? You've seen a lot of change in the whole field. Well, yes, it, it changed uh, dramatically. I mean, uh, now it's, it's another, another story. Um, maybe because of internet, because of the cloud, because of uh, the software as a service. Uh, you know, in, in, in recent years, the CIA was only supporting business process with technology. He was a technology-driven guy, expert in technology, and he had to integrate technology in the company. Now we are looking for business process support, for efficiency, and for innovation. And the technology part is, is, is even lower, because if you use uh, cloud systems, cloud software, and outsourcing, uh, you don't have uh, your own uh, team, your own software projects, so the, the tasks that you have to develop are completely different. I think that the CIO are very well prepared because they know the company very well. They are supporting all the business processes. They know the technology, which is a tool for that. And, 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 and they know the business, I mean, because you are part of the business. So uh, you are transversal, you are cross for every function. So it's a key person to lead innovation. And that's an opportunity because in that function, you speak about business, about uh, new ideas, and, um, and I think it's part of the new role of the CIO. Uh, for me, it's my case now, but I think it's part of the role of everybody. So who came up with your title, Chief, in Chief, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chief Information? And, and, uh, and you know, it, was it your idea or the chairman's idea? Or? <laughs> well, I joined the company five years ago uh, as a CIO, okay? But uh, I started leading the innovation uh, three years ago. So, and, um, and, and it was not IT, I mean, uh, it was uh, business innovation. So I said to the executive committee that we had to, to change my, my name because I was leading IT, which is information officer, but I was leading also innovation, which is another story. So in, in fact, I, I, I performed my, my, my title and I think it, um, yeah, well, it, 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 it is according to what I, I'm doing today. I mean, it's, it's a right uh, way of naming it. Forgive me for being personal, but how did it evolve? Because it, it really does kind of explain, um, I mean, what you've just said, you need to know the company, but you need to know these other things that are a little bit arcane that, that people don't know. So how did, how all of a sudden did you realize I'm leading innovation here? Well, no, I think it was very normal because we decided at the executive committee level, uh, you know, the CIA is very well trained for change management because we are changing everything all the day. And the CEO said to me, okay, start with the innovation, um, with the innovation program. And the first thing I, I performed was to, to establish the methodology to implement innovation. But 
uh, after several years of working, I decided to change uh, my role because I think it was, it was also positive to differentiate between IT and innovation. And I wanted to speak a different language with different people. And I wanted them to recognize me both uh, functions, okay? And is that working? It is working. I'm very happy with that because it's working. We are um, launching many projects. I think the business is, is, is earning many advantages uh, with the competitors because of innovation. And, um, and people are very enthusiastic about that. So. Could you give just one example, and then we'll go on to something else, but I'm just curious of an example where you can say that the information and, and innovative roles came together. Well, we have um, uh, several examples. The energy efficiency I explained to you before, mm -hmm. to manage a facility, or um, even in an airport, for instance, we are going to, to, to install a different floor in hydro in several areas. And uh, while you are walking um, on the floor, you are producing energy. So the, the, the passengers are saving energy for the airport. They are contributing for energy efficiency. So it's a green environment also initiative. And this is technology because it's the floor uh, which produces the energy, for instance. This is a and you do a lot of walking at Heathrow Airport <laughs> too. <laughs> it's yes. a lot of energy. There are millions of passengers, yeah. <laughs> What, what advice, as my last question, what advice would you give somebody else who aspired to the job that you've just described, which sounds like a lot of fun, actually? Well, uh, the advice uh, would be to develop um, skills and that uh, maybe he hasn't, he hasn't, like uh, communication skills. These are very important. Normally, uh, IT people um, are not very good communicators and they have to speak with uh, business leaders, uh, business CEOs. So you need to speak uh, their languages. So this is uh, a skill you have to develop. And also maybe you have to study about business, business, not IT, but business, how to perform a business, how to increase the margins, how to perform a P&L, and these kind of things, because this is, the, this is what you have to look for. I mean, you are not going to look for a technology to implement. You need uh, to improve the business. In that sense, it's better to know the business. So it's, it's good to study about the business. And of course, it's important to know about uh, best practices, other companies, what they are doing, to be very open, I mean, open-minded, in order to have ideas from everywhere. This is my, my advice. And very innovative. <laughs> okay. Federico Flores, thank you very much for being with us on NCA Knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much.